The diagnosis is advanced arthritis and in both hips. When I finally got x-rayed, when I finally figured out that I better go and see why it hurts so much, he was like, oh, this is, this is bad, this is advanced, you've got no cartilage left at all, and you need to have hip replacements, um, you know, we'll, we'll put you on the list. And I was like, oh, blimey, that's two big, serious operations. But it's in the UK, these lists can go, uh, to be on a list like that, can, I didn't even go on it at first. I thought, well, I'm going to go off and think about that. <clears throat> and um, I came to Bonn, uh, and I had support at the airports with help, because there's all the walking at the airport, so I was literally being pushed around a little bit, which I found very humiliating, because I've been a dancer, you know, all my life, and very physical, and yoga, and I kept wanting to say to the wheelchair guy, this isn't really me, but I didn't. <clears throat> I swallowed the pride, and I got here, um, and uh, it was a, f a wonderful event, from the beginning to the end, I had lots of great experiences, but um, but I was hobbling around a little bit. It's like I just didn't, and I didn't come for healing. I came to go deeper into the meditations. On the second time of being a healer, the second coherence healing, um, I sudden I asked, "How can I open to more love, even more love?" And I got hit by, I can only describe it as a bolt of luminous blue light that came in through the top of my head, filled my whole body, arms, belly, feet, heart exploding. I was shaking all over, you know, just tears were streaming out of my eyes. I was very aware we were meant to be healing someone, so I tried not to wail and scream. So it was silent, <laughs> and I was shaking and trembling. It was extraordinary. It was, of all the experiences of my life, the most powerful, and, and there have been many, because I'm a grandmother now. <laughs> um, that was very moving. And that was, so that night, for the first time in five years, I slept without any pain, without being woken up. Um, in, in arthritis, people typically wake up with pain. It somehow starts to build up while they're lying down. Slept all night like a baby. Pain totally gone from my hips after four, four and a half years. Um, so I walked all over the hotel and up and down the stairs. I ignored the assistants at the airport. I just strode through the airport. Um, there was a plane ride, a bus ride, a long train back down to Wales, and I was just like, Phew, piece of cake all the way. <clears throat> so that lasted about three or four weeks, and then I got offered, somebody offered me a very reduced rate to have stem cell therapy into the hips, because it's actually usually very expensive. And I thought, oh, I was wondering, because I felt great already. And then I thought, well, maybe this is a sign, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. It's being offered for reduced rate and, they, and I can pay monthly. So I went along. And very strangely, from that procedure, the pain came back, intensely came back. Um, perhaps not as bad as when it was at its worst, but it came back. And I was still meditating and still doing work. Um, but that complete pain-free period just went away, but it would come and go a little bit. But so uh, the stem cell therapy, for me, seems to have not worked. And I had black and blue bruising all down my entire belly into the t top of my legs. I mean, it was intense because they, they do liposuction um, and then they use your fat to pull out the stem cells. Anyway, for one reason or another, and perhaps it's because suddenly I was relying on something physical rather than, you know, whatever it was. Um, but anyway, I soldiered on like I do. And eventually I, I'm, I'm put, I'm been now been put on a list for hip replacements. But meanwhile, I'm all the time thinking, maybe I'm not going to need that. Maybe I'm not going to need that. So I'm here now. As soon as I arrived at the hotel, again, I had some help at the airport. As soon as I arrived at the hotel, 
I started walking better. I hadn't even, it was Sunday, there hadn't even been a meditation yet. I hadn't even heard Dr. Joe's voice. I started thinking, oh, <laughs> this feels okay. So ever since I've been here, I've been sleeping like a baby all night long um, without waking up with pain. And I've been walking around. I have a little stick. The only time I've used it has been on the steep part of the walking meditation sometimes. Um, <clears throat> uh, so that's, that's really the, the story. And, and what, it's, what, it, what it's made me understand is um, it's so clear. I mean, it's so clearly to do with a state of mind. And it, arthritis is a very physical diagnosis. You've got cartilage gone. But it makes me realize that the pain isn't that. It's, it's, uh, it's something you can deal with the pain and that you can clear the pain. And um, because I think the pain, in my case at least, is associated with all my cherished traumas, you know, my losses, my betrayals, my heartbreaks I'm, that are so important and so special to me. And can I really, and I feel that they kind of get stashed in my hips there. <clears throat> so uh, it's, it's more to do with uh, chucking all that out. And on the first walking meditation, he's like, well, who, who are you really and who do you want to be? And I just saw myself as this joyful, free person who has a wonderful story to tell. And I have lots of grandchildren. A lot of them are granddaughters. And, and, and so I have a great desire to be a shining example, you know, not grandma with a cane. Um, and, and I feel that in me. So... Uh, this is what I want to share, so that's basically it for now.